Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing you another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we are asking the question of how good is Brazil? This is the final video in the how good is series in terms of each talking about each civilization. Um, you guys can look forward to seeing a ranking of sorts of these uh, coming out for the next guide video tomorrow. So uh, hopefully if you've enjoyed the series, you'll come check out the uh, the next one talking about how I fit all these tips together in terms of their relative power. But let's talk about Brazil while we're here. This is the point of this uh, particular video. Uh, Brazil for me was one of the most challenging ones to do. This is why I left it to last. Um, its bonuses are strange. Um, and I was really hoping to have even more experience than I do right now with Brazil by the time I made this video. So I can give myself the most amount of time to use these bonuses. Uh, so some of this will of course be from experience, but some of it also will be me kind of extrapolating what these bonuses mean in terms of breaking it down from my perspective. And I'm sure I'm gonna see alternate perspectives, especially for the more complicated bonuses. And I think these are one of the more complicated bonuses in the game. Uh, so let's have a look. Uh, the first of these is uh, magnanimous. After recruiting or patronizing a great person, 20% uh, of its, is it patronizing or patronizing? I feel like patron, anyways. 20% uh, of its great person point cost is refunded. Uh, there's no way to say anything negative about this ability. Um, you like this. This means when you get great people, you get more great people of that type. Cheaper. Good. Nice. I like it. Um, great people are pretty awesome in this game. Uh, musicians, writers, and musicians, uh, excuse me, and uh, artists are pretty boring. Um, they're very necessary for tours and victories. Certainly getting more for tours and victories is good for the for you if you're trying to do that. Tours and victories are a little bit hard to do in multiplayer right now, but okay, sure. Uh, and the other great people are really kind of fun and interesting and unique. Some of them are really strong, most of them are not, but some of them are really strong and certain types are really strong and they're all pretty damn fun to use because they do things actively and you get to make decisions with them, which is part of the enjoyment of the game, right? So uh, for example, there's some really cool merchants, ones that give you extra uh, economic policy slots, which is just uh, absolutely amazing. There's engineers that let you rush wonders. Those are really, really cool. Uh, there's uh, various guys who let you get either more districts or more population or more housing or all sorts of kind of cool things like that. And I like those. So having more of them, yeah, it's a cool bonus. I like it, it's fun. Is it good? Maybe certainly getting more engineers and more writers and more scientists, excuse me, not writers, more merchants, more engineers and more scientists are going to be helpful. So I, I don't think it's a bad ability. Uh, but a lot of times the a lot of times the stuff doesn't seem massively impactful to me. Uh, some of the ones I did talk about the, like the engineering wonder rushing or the, uh, so the some of the scientist ones like just the raw thousand science here or 1500 science are really powerful and certainly the economic policy card slots really powerful but a lot of times it's less powerful things like oh this city gets free ancient ancient walls or this city gets uh, one extra district they're kind of cool but they're not super powerful so 20 percent uh of the great person point cost is refunded still seems kind of nice um i don't know i don't know what that means in terms of power it's fun but i'm not sure how great it is from a power perspective uh, moving on amazon Rainforest tiles provide plus one adjacency bonus for the campus, the commercial hub, the holy site, and the theater scare districts. Uh, Brazil has a rainforest bias uh, as well um, in there. So you do spawn near a lot of rainforest some of the time. Problem is you can't plant cities based on that alone. Uh, when you plant cities, you plant cities on luxury uh, near uh, luxuries and you plant cities near housing. Uh, so you can actually grow those cities, which means that rainforest tends to be then a occurrence that happens after you've settled not so much an occurrence you settled for it's not like you're settling for the rainforest rainforest tiles as a whole are pretty weak uh non-hill rainforest is two food one hammer that can't be improved that's nearly useless uh two food two hammer on a hill tile that's okay in the early game but quite weak compared to for example grassland mines uh once you start hitting any of the mid to late game stuff I mean, grassland mines are very, very early, two food, three hammers, and by the end of the game are much, much better than that, right? Uh, and if you're lucky, you have a high amount of bananas, uh, and grassland or uh, rainforest hill bananas are three food, two hammers, which starts to be pretty damn good that you can improve for another gold and another half of housing. That's okay. But the problem is, as a whole, rainforest is not particularly good set of tiles. There's just not tiles that you care about that much because you can't improve it. Now there's exceptions. Chitsun, of course, gives you that extra one production, two culture per rainforest tile, which is amazing. That's a really good bonus uh, as a whole if you have a lot of uh, rainforest. But the problem I have with this bonus is that it's difficult to really take advantage of this for more than one or possibly two uh, districts in your empire. And it's uh, expensive to do so as well. So 
yes, you might have uh, a city you've settled, let's say your capital, and it's because you have that bias, you've settled in the, in the rainforest, and uh, you have a big swath of rainforest, and rainforest is slow to move through, it's rough terrain, and often because it's, uh, it's rainforest, which is in of itself rough terrain, and some of it's on hills, it's like ultra rough terrain, it takes a very high amount of movement points to move through, even for scouts to move through that, so you're going to have slower starts in and around rainforest, just takes longer for your movements to get, your units to get out of that rainforest to other locations, or to move through that rainforest to get cities out, so you're going to be more susceptible to barbarians especially barbarian horsemen which are really really fast they have four movement which means they're going to be more mobile in that shit than you are most of the time uh your units are going to be much slower most of the time um it's going to take you longer to settle places longer to scout you're going to get less tribal villages less uh, city states because you're going to get out of that area slower uh, etc etc so rainforest as a whole probably a negative uh, modifier in terms of what type of start location you want, but you're going to get more of that. And let's say you have a city that has a big swath of rainforest, and you want to plant your comp your uh, your uh, campus right in the middle of that. All right, so you buy some tiles for that and you plant that there, and then you're like, well. I want to get my district adjacency bonuses, but if I do that, I'm going to lose my rainforest adjacency bonuses. And my rainforest adjacency bonuses are actually better than my district adjacency bonuses because uh, Brazil gets plus one adjacency for at least the, the campus, the Commerce Hub, and the Holy Site and the Theater Square. Um, of those, by the way, you will always be building com Commerce Hubs because Commerce Hubs are probably the best district in the game right now. Uh, and you will have to build campuses because campuses are mandatory towards competing uh, in the science game. Holy Sites and Theater Square districts are very uh, situational and sometimes Sometimes optional. Holy sites as a whole are very hard to pay for in the early game. They're just weak compared to the other districts. And theater square districts have a very similar problem. Uh, so you don't tend to build these as much. So really, the bonuses are going to be campus and commercial hubs. Commercial hubs already have a two gold uh, river uh, adjacency bonus, which means that probably you're still going to be prioritizing the river because between if you if you've settled on a river, which you're almost always going to be doing, and you put a commerce hub on a river, and the river gets the two gold adjacency already, and it gets half a district adjacency for being next to your capital, then even one more district, like for example the industrial district, which you also need to make at some point, suddenly you're giving plus three to that commerce hub, which means that you would have to have at least three jungle, uh, three rainforests surrounding that commercial hub to make it equal. So in reality, when I read this bonus, I actually see this almost almost entirely for campuses, although occasionally, situationally, it might be helpful for your commerce hubs. And very rarely, you might bother with holy sites and theater square districts because religion just as a whole isn't very good. Uh, and theater square districts tend to be a little bit, uh, tends to be that district that kind of pushes you over your district cap that just isn't worth it compared to building your other districts uh, and the timing for that. So that said, that's still a very powerful bonus. If you have a lot of rainforest and you have stuff that gets adjacency bonuses for that bonus, that's good. That's something that is uh, something to look forward to as Brazil. You can get some very powerful campus bonuses uh, very early in the game with this because uh, unlike most of the science from the campus districts, which comes from buildings, most of the science actually is from the uh, library, university, and research lab, more so the university and research lab. But in the early game, uh, before you built any of those, the library is only, I think, two science. So if the campus is getting six adjacency bonus, for example, like you know, go on the high end of this, uh, that's pretty powerful in terms of science. Now you have to find that, you gotta buy the tiles to get it. You can't do that adjacent to the capital if you're gonna maximize that, because that's one of your tiles is gone, it's not a rainforest, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, there are some synergies that people have been pointing out in my Games as Brazil, even before we've done this review video, talking about some of the pantheons give you additional uh, rainforest. Uh, there's a rainforest pantheon that gives you a, 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 a additional faith for stuff like that. I think it's for your holy site. So if you settle a holy site in the middle of a rainforest as Brazil and you take the, the ra uh, rainforest pantheon, you can get a lot of faith generation very early. Uh, faith generation very early doesn't seem all that strong, but it does feel like it might be able to synergize with... Uh, patronizing uh, great people <laughs> I swear man it's probably said patronizing and patronizing um, but anyways I don't know I don't know if there's a difference between those words or not uh, I know there's a difference in meaning I know what this means in this space this is basically supporting a great person or you know but anyways the point is if you purchase them with faith that's okay it's very expensive the cost uh, is based on the number of great uh, great people points you're missing so uh, it goes up uh, if, for example, you have zero great person points, purchasing a great person with faith of that, that type of great person for faith is going to be extremely expensive, even on online speeds. So it must be astronomical on the slower speeds. Um, with that in mind, 
you might get more, you might be able to use that faith for that, but that's still not going to be all that much across the course of the game, even if you're generating a lot of faith, because it's just not a very efficient way to spend faith. It scales up very, very quickly uh, the cost of purchasing great people based on the remaining uh, the remaining stuff. But maybe you could snipe a couple of the really important great people by uh, buying out the remainder of it when you're not next in line for it. So maybe there's something to be said about a little bit of faith here. Certainly you could try some sort of faith purchasing strategy, but honestly, I only, I'm, I'm really beginning to back off faith purchasing strategies as a whole, except for possibly Russia, maybe Japan. Uh, and that's kind of getting close to about it. Maybe Arabia for faith purchasing, just because it's so hard to get holy sites to invest in holy sites. They're just such a weak district compared to the other districts. And to really have a, enough faith per turn and enough banked faith to get any real value out of the purchasing strategies, you need to uh, have invested in those at a relatively early period in the game to get that faith rolling. Um, so as a whole, I have a hard time investing in holy sites, and I think Brazil is going to suffer from that same problem. If you invest in holy sites, you will be, be you'll be majorly behind in your commerce uh, commerce industrial campus builds that are required for every city. Uh, and if you happen to settle Brazil and you're settling coastal, where you also need to build that harbor district, investing in that holy site is really, really detrimental because it pushes all that back one district further, which is a big problem. So probably you're going to see this bonus applied primarily to campuses. And is four or five, three or four extra science per city a major bonus? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, time will tell perhaps on that one to see how big of a deal it is is because the question that really comes out of that is is that extra science for Brazil consistently translating into some sort of early or mid game advantage over my opponents and the general way that science translates into a advantage over my opponents is it gives me access to military units that my opponents don't have faster. Um, and I'm, a, I'm not sure if that will happen. Maybe. Maybe you could do something with Brazil, like an ultra early horseman, uh, uh, ultra early night rush uh, by going campuses first. But I don't know. I don't know, man. We'll have to see if I can find some sort of early game bonus that's really going to be consistently useful to, to uh, justify rushing a campus on that. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe you could think of it a different way. I guess another way that that could be applied would be if you do build a campus in the capital because it has a ton of rainforest, you get that extra science. Perhaps you can be a little bit slower in building campuses in your expands because you can uh, prioritize uh, production infrastructure a little bit higher, maybe get a monument up in those districts where you wouldn't otherwise because the capital is carrying the uh, lion's share of the of the science per turn because it has those bonuses and maybe that means I can build my campuses a little bit later in my expands. As I said, this is really going to be something, a bonus that for me sorts itself out as I'm able to play the sieve over and over and over again and think of and try testing different ways in which I can get the most out of that bonus. At the moment, it feels mediocre to me. Which is, I mean, I suppose, from a, from a guide perspective, it's not the most helpful uh, conclusion. It feels like it's average, I say. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, most of your abilities are going to be average in that. You're going to have the really strong outliers. But uh, still, I, I could see people being annoyed with me for that. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the bonus. Rainforest tiles provide plus one housing for a neighborhood uh, built adjacent to them. This bonus is meaningless. Um, by the time you're building uh, neighborhoods, it's very late in the game. Neighborhoods are very powerful. They're pretty damn cheap and they're pretty damn powerful. They give you a lot of housing already. Having an extra housing per neighborhood, yeah, that's pretty nice. But I can't remember the last time I built more than about one or two neighborhoods in a, in a city anyways. So maybe this makes it two more population or excuse me, one more population point sooner or excuse me, one, one to two more population that I can get in a city because I have one to two adjacent rainforest on that first neighborhood before I need to build my second neighborhood. Maybe. I don't think this bonus is uh, going to be relevant to the game in much at all. So, okay, whatever. It's, it's, still, it's still a free bonus, but it's not a, it's not a particularly large bonus at all. All right, let's take a look at their unique units. The, it's a unique battleship, and it's available earlier. Um, let's look it up directly. All right, replaces the battleship. It upgrades to a missile cruiser, and it is available where? Um, nationalism. Okay, so where are the regular battleships available? Steel. Okay, so a couple things to talk about here. So regular battleships come into play here. And the Brazilian battleship comes into play on the civics tree, not the... Uh, 
not the tech tree and is available at the industrial era. I think what this is going to mean is that that is an earlier era requirement on the civics tree through a tech that is pretty much a must have for war techs anyways. This is one of the best one of the best civics techs for war games ever because it allows you to make um, cores. And cores are very strong, very, very strong. It's basically a way to get around, to help get around the, the one unit per tile restriction. If you have cores and your opponents don't, uh, you're in very good shape to war because your units are just gonna be that much stronger on those tiles. So you're gonna want nationalism anyways. And this is this has two kind of unique things to this, right? So the first is the timing on this. This is gonna be earlier than it's likely to be for other players, just you're gonna have battleships sooner. Um, and because it's, an and that's just, just the tech for building a battleship. But additionally, it doesn't require coal. So other players have to tech, if they want battleships, they've got to go to uh, steel, but they've also got to go up to steam power to get coal so they can actually build their battleships. Whereas Brazil, not the case. Brazil, uh, I just lost it. Hold on a second, so I get it back. Brazil's uh, going to not have to tech for coal because all of the unique units, uh, they don't have their uh, the, the equivalent um, strategic resource requirement. So anytime you have a unique unit that replaces a, uh, a different unit, it doesn't, require, uh, it doesn't require the strategic resource for that. So this is gonna be a battleship that doesn't require coal that is available at a earlier tech that isn't a science-based tech. So it doesn't require you to go a certain tech path to get it. It's gonna be based on your culture and it's gonna be based on a civics tech that you already want. So you're already going to be teching for that. So it's going to be inside the normal route of uh, civics progression that you're taking anyways. And it's going to give you a battleship. All right, let's take a look at the combat strength. Uh, battleship combat strength, 60 melee, 70 ranged. Uh, let's take a look at this guy. Uh, it goes up to 60, 70, right? Did I just look at that right? 60, 70, and this one goes up to 70, 80. Five movement points compared to five movement points, three range. And I think it was still three range, right? Yes. Huh. So it's quite a bit more powerful. That's a 10 bonus and 10 is in the range of significant. Uh, it's not like a 20 bonus, but it's much better than a five. That's a significant boost in power that's earlier and doesn't require the strategic resource. I've not yet had a reason to have battleships as Brazil yet, but because this is three range, this is massively better than most of the other uh, naval units out there on Pangea maps. When people settle near the coast, which they do, they often don't settle directly on it. They're often a couple tiles out from it, but uh, this is going to be enough range to get there. The only downside I think I have with this, looking at this right now, I think this is a pretty strong unit as a whole, is I'm pretty sure in Civilization 6, unlike Civilization 5, I think in Civ 6, your battleships do not have indirect fire which means that if there are hills in the way, you can't shoot the city anyways, which sucks. I don't know why battleships lost in direct fire. I absolutely think they ought to have it, uh, but I think this is gonna be a pretty dominant naval unit. It's available sooner. It's a very powerful naval unit. It gets the three range. Uh, it has very high combat strength. Uh, question is, will that be impactful? If it could shoot cities that are settled anywhere within three tiles of the coast, I would say there is a decent chance it could be impactful, but I think without, uh, without indirect fire it may have trouble actually shooting the city that you want to bombard uh, to actually attack that city which means it's going to be hard to efficiently support landed units if you're trying some sort of amphibious invasion of some other players coastal units um that said it can be used as a very powerful defensive unit if brazil's on the coast um but i'm not sure that is going to be applied as much as it would be uh otherwise if it did have indirect fire so Let's move on, we'll talk about Street Carnival, then I'll try to summarize my kind of thoughts as a whole of what this means for the civilization. So Street Carnival is a unique entertainment complex uh, that is unique to Brazil. Entertainment complexes are available at games and recreation for everybody, including Brazil. Uh, the Street Carnival is two amenities as opposed to the one of the, uh, the other, uh, of their basic uh, entertainment district. Um, and that's really all the differences. Uh, it is a unique district. A unique district means that it does not count towards the city's district limit. And it also means that it costs half off, I believe. So this is 30 as opposed to 60. Yes, yeah, so it is half off. Um, something to be said about these, you, you pretty much don't build entertainment complexes until either you've been at war for a very long period of time. Well, there's other bonuses too. We'll talk about those in a second. But you don't, you don't tend to build uh, entertainment uh, complexes till much later in the game. Uh, or if you're at war a lot, mostly uh, amenities are not the limiting factor on city growth. The vast majority of the time, it is housing that is a limitation to city growth until much later in the game. Um, 
However, the way districts work is they go up in cost over time uh, based on the number of civics and I believe number of science texts that you have researched, which means that what you should do when you get access to a district, if it is a unique district, so for uh, Brazil, for Greece, for um, Germany, for uh, Russia, for any of the civs that have unique districts, you should always, the second you're able to, the, the first time you're able to do this, so as soon as you hit the tech, you should place one of these districts down because you don't have to finish it. You just place it and go back to building whatever you're doing. The cost that it costs you to do that gets locked in at the time you place the district so that you can come back to finishing that district at a later time and it will only have cost you what it cost you when you place that district, which means it won't be affected by the fact that you're continuing to tech through the various civics uh, or various technologies and it won't increase the cost of that district for you. Uh, because it's a unique district for Brazil, you can do that without the, the downside. The downside would be it would drive up the number of population your city has to have before it could build other more important districts. But because it's a unique district for Brazil, it doesn't cost them to do that. Certainly two amenities is better than one if you're building these because you need amenities. Having more of those amenities means you have to build less of them, which means you can spend your hammers elsewhere. That is good. Uh, but as a whole, I don't think this is a very strong. I don't think it's very strong because I don't think the entertainment complex is very strong. If you think about the strongest uh, districts out there, those being the commercial district, uh, to a lesser degree, the harbor district, to um, the, the industrial district and the campus district, those are the ones that if you see bonuses to those, those are the ones that should really stick out in your head as these are powerful bonuses. Um, there isn't entertainment complex is way, way, way down in how powerful I think uh, districts are at all. So I don't think this district as a whole is particularly powerful. However, it unlocks a unique thing that's unique to uh, Brazil, which uh, unlocks uh, the carnival, which uh, grants an additional amenity while it's underway and a variety of great people points once it's completed. Um, I don't think anything of plus one amenity while it's underway. I guess what that does is it makes your hammers a little bit better. Uh, because if you enter a static in your cities from that, you'll have a production boost or a boost to all non-food yields, which is good. However, as a way of actually treating your amenity problem, you can't have all of your cities perpetually building uh, uh, building projects because they can, can't build other things like infrastructure or military, which means that they can't really be tasked with just gaining one amenity uh, for doing that. So you're not going to do it for that. That's just a little bonus of why you're doing it. So the only reason you're actually doing this is you're doing it for the variety of great people points once completed. And the problem is, I don't know how this is actually calculated. Other district projects, it's based on uh, the production you put into it. So basically the production the city has determines the output it does. But I don't know how much that scales for. I don't know the formula for this. Until I see the formula for this, it becomes very challenging to get some sense of how strong it is. How many great people points am I getting versus the hammers I've invested. I could test this extensively, but let's crowdsource where uh, we, we make our living off of you guys uh, viewing my videos. I do this for a living if you didn't know that. Um, but we can now crowdsource this out to you guys. You guys are going to play, all the people who watch this are going to com combine, play so many more games of Brazil than I'll ever be able to in my lifetime, right? Just from you guys doing that. So you guys let me know what type of returns are you seeing on the various, uh, the various game speeds you play? How good is this in terms of how many great people points are you getting? Does it vary? So is it more for some versus others? Or is it just straight up a flat amount across all of them? Or is it only a different random one each time? How does that mechanic work? And how many great people points you're generating? Feel free to post about that. I would love to see a pretty awesome uh, comment thread about that where you guys discuss that. Maybe we can together get some sense of how useful of an ability this is. Because if it gives you a ton of great people, that's pretty good. If it gives you kind of a weak to moderate number of great people, yeah, okay. It does synergize with Brazil's other abilities, uh, but my fear is that most of the time the great people aren't strong enough to do that. However, it might allow you to rush for very, very important great people. If you already have more great people, uh, get more great people because you get uh, more back, more points refunded for free when you pick them up, and you now have a way to generate them on demand. The problem is, if you think about it that way, if you think about it as a way of actively gaining a great person that you want, most of the times you do that, isn't it going to be better to just run the the, the district project already. So if there's an engineer that you want, isn't it better to run an industrial project instead of the street carnival? The street carnival requires I have built a district that I probably don't want most of the time. And it's going to give me great people points, but it's probably not going to let me target them. So what I would need to see is the magnitude of these great people. Is it giving me more great people 
more engineer great people in the carnival than it is giving me engineer great people points in the in the industrial district or not because if it isn't it feels worse because part of the reason why i would want to use this use this project at all is because i want a specific great person i want to generate those points as quickly as i can to get that and is it really going to be better to run street carnival instead of just running industrial uh uh, industrial zone logistics or whatever it's called uh, for the specific project for the industrial district. My suspicion is it probably isn't. So this is just a way to generate great people points as a whole. And it turns out great people points as a whole aren't very that valuable as 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 you don't want equal level of that. You don't care about musicians, writers, or uh, artists when you're not doing a tourism victory. You almost never care about them when you're not doing a tourism victory. You don't really care about admirals if you're not on the coast. You don't really care about generals too much if you're just sitting in some middle era where you're not expecting a fight, right? So you often care about merchants, scientists, and engineers because all their bonuses are really cool. But if there's a sp particular engineer, a particular scientist you want, and you really, really want him because the bonus is so good, for example, the merchant that gives you plus one economic slot, let's say he shows up and you absolutely want them. Is it really better to be running street carnival than just the, uh, the commerce uh, district, uh, district project? My suspicion is it's not, and I'm a bit worried about that because that would be a, quite a uh, quite an unfortunate thing if it's better to run specific district uh, district projects than it is to run actually street carnival. All right, I, I as I said, I left Brazil uh, to last because I think they are one of the most complex set of bonuses to actually characterize to actually get your head around what this is doing for your civilization. I mean, clearly. Anytime you look at these bonuses, you have kind of two main things you're doing. You're comparing these to other civs bonuses. You're comparing them to how the game is going to play out. And you're you're trying to get a sense of how they fit together to make the civilization unique and to see the bonuses they're doing for that. I, I see that Brazil is supposed to be focused around great people points and around rainforest, although this random battleship seems kind of weird. Um, but I'm not sure that I see strong strategies that also incorporate great people. It may end up being kind of a nice thing. More great people is certainly nice for the Empire. It's a little bit fun. It's a little bit of small bonuses. But as a general, they're not so overpowered that it can be an entire strategy based around that. So maybe this amounts to essentially uh, Magnanimous and Street Carnival, kind of a weak to moderate uh, set of bonuses. Uh, where the campus bonus is nice, but their other ones aren't very impactful. The housing bonuses are basically non-existent, and the battleship is situationally great, uh, but most of the time not very useful because Pangea and no indirect fire. We'll see. I think it's going to be hard to attack Brazil if uh, Brazil's coastal cities, because those battleships will be able to defend there. I think uh, it's going to be hard for Brazil to expand because of the uh, the rainforest out there and perhaps hard for other players to move troops around efficiently but i'm not sure we're going to see much street carnival uh in in multiplayer because i don't think it's going to be that impactful i worry that most of the time i'm going to be end up wasting this rainforest adjacency bonus because a lot of times it's just going to be very small amounts like a bonus of one or two here per city or something and i think uh, magnanimous most of the time is going to be fun but maybe not all that good all right, guys, hopefully this has been a little bit of food for thought. You guys can uh, certainly poke into some of these bonuses. I'd love to hear the results you guys get from a little bit more comprehensive testing of Street Carnival or stuff like that. That'd be really kind of interesting for me to be receiving the crowdsource knowledge as well. So feel free to post about that in the comments section. Uh, hopefully this has been an enjoyable video for you guys. Uh, if you did like it, check out my other guide videos. We've done one now for every single civilization in Civilization VI. And the next video we're going to do, tomorrow's video, is going to be a video where I put them in some sort of uh, rank order. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do it uh, on a one-to-one, -one, so I'm not sure if it's going to be like this is the number one civ, this is the number two, or if I'm going to do it by tier list again, where these are the top tier civs, these are the second tier civs, etc. It'll be one of those formats. Hopefully you guys will uh, like that and check that out. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, please hit the follow button here, subscribe button here, rather, or come and come follow me on Twitch. Uh, I do put out a lot of Civilization VI content. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. See you soon. Filthy out.